Welcome back to wagertalk.com. Friday night college basketball action. We've got Valparaiso at Wright State. It's a big one in the Horizon League. Velpo currently leading the uh, conference, but Wright State's right there, right behind him. That's a lot of rights. <laughs> I hope I'm right on this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, <he's laughs> <being right. laughs> Yeah, I stayed up all night for, <laughs> with that intro. What did you think? He's acting like he uh, did this off the top of his head. You know? <laughs> There's nothing on the top of his head, obviously. He, oh, <laughs> <laughs> don't you be laughing. <laughs> I didn't say a word. Did I shut up real fast? <laughs> yeah, the guy in the middle that's got hair, you know, he, he always throws those jokes right. out yeah, there. Yeah, well, that's the one good thing I have. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. We're going to Reno together. I told him one, of these, time, one of these times he's coming back. He's going to have our, he's going to be sporting our haircut. He's a sound sleeper. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting a little too personal. Can we get to the game? <laughs> uh, looking at this one, guys, this is a situation for me. It's the second part of a one-two punch. I was on Detroit on Monday against Wright State. Wright State was coming off a blowout win on Saturday. Uh, win by 30 some then going in to Monday night playing Detroit a team that they had beaten soundly by double digits both meetings last year and had this game coming up on Friday so I felt it was a flat spot for Wright State looking ahead coming off the big win Detroit did what I wanted them to do they covered and I'm happy that uh, Wright State won and not covered, you know, rather than losing outright, uh, keeps them only one game behind Velpo. So basically, this is their game of the season so far. Velpo, the best team in that conference, playing on their home floor. I'm looking for a big effort out of them coming into this one. It's their game of the year, isn't it, you know, yeah. for the Raiders? And, you know, I look at this and, and break it down, and I'm thinking, okay, I've got Valpo on this particular floor four points better than Wright State but that doesn't put the emotion into it in all the factors that you've mentioned. Also, when you look at this, they've got the best offensive player on the floor, the kid Alec Peters for Valpo, you know, 17, 18 points a game, eight rebounds per game. But here's the thing, outside of Keith Carter for Valpo, he's a real good disher. He's, a, he's got a nice assist to turnover ratio. But outside of Keith Carter, six of their next eight key players are all upside down in assist to turnover ratio. And the two guys that are ahead, that are above water, are like, you know, one bad night of being upside down also. You're talking virtually seven or eight players are upside down for Valpo and assist turnover ratio, which means the world to my kind of college basketball handicapping. So outside of Keith Carter, they've got some issues when it comes to addition and when it comes to losing handle on the basketball. And again, as you mentioned, Valpo may, may be the better team, and I think they are. Well, they are. But the bottom line is, is Wright State might be in that right spot to make you a right handicapper on Friday night. Wow, and he bounced back with that one off the top of his <laughs> head. Uh, definitely, and we look for line value, too. You know, you've got Velpo coming off a blowout win on Monday, and so now they're coming in rolling, undefeated in the conference, a couple big blowout wins, put up a lot of points in the last game, and then the public's going to look and see that Wright State you know, barely escaped. I think we get a little bit of value in the line that we might not have gotten had Wright State won big again on Monday, so I'm looking for that fine you know and when you're talking about taking a home dog you know any extra value you've got there in a game that you're anticipating to go right down to the wire that's just bonus in my books well I'm not sure the lines makers are really making too much of an adjustments on something like that the public betters are not looking to play the horizon league mm -hmm. these are professional betters that'll be playing this league and and I used to be a season ticket holder for the horizon league so I follow this pretty well uh, it's interesting how for the most part Every year, the same teams are really good. Valpo has just been amazing. Valpo, when they get to the tournament, they're going to be a value team. You know, you talk about teams you don't want to face, they'll probably end up putting Valpo against one of the nice sure. teams that are really good, and, of course, they're not going to be able to see that. But this Valpo team has been very good this year. There's been spots that they, I thought they were going to have a letdown, and they haven't. But Wright State, strong home court. I believe they're 8-1 straight up at home. Um, very good, strong home court there. And then they always have a strong home court. Valpo's a team I think has obviously has the more talent, but this is a game we find out a lot about Wright State. If Wright State doesn't show up, if they're the Cleveland Cavaliers against the Golden State Warriors, <laughs> then that could be a major blow to this team the rest of the season. Two things to point out what you just said, and we'll wrap this up. That one home loss that they had was a, to a team they weren't familiar with, Georgia State, mm -hmm. and they that was the game right before they played Xavier, which playing Xavier is a big game for you know Wright State. And... I agree with you that most people wouldn't be playing on Horizon 
league game, that it's going to be more professionals. But the fact that it is a Friday night game, there's only a couple college basketball games, it becomes more like we talk about a TV game and yet a Sunday night or a Monday night game. More people will bet this game on Friday night just because there's nothing else to bet. Yeah, it's usually so just it's the Ivy. The it's Ivy's good. on a Friday night. Yeah. People who don't know a thing about the Ivy League are betting the Ivy League just because it's it's something. Right. Bad. So there'll yeah. be more. You know, is this the first team to 60 wins? I mean, it looks like you know that's what Wright State has to do. If I see the They're game, terrible on if offense. the game's played half court, I'm I'm ecstatic. Yeah. I I want Wright State to be able to slow slow it down, and I'm hoping they're able to do that on their home floor. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm backing at. I'm backing with my play. I'm expecting him to come out around a five or six point un underdog. I see this is a game that's going to go right down to the buzzer. I've got Wright State pulling off the upset. And let's call it by one, but I'm going to take those points. I think they're in this all the way to the end. And that's my video best bet for this week. Take Wright State plus the points on Friday night. Live home dog, big conference game. And guys, check out this weekend. We're going to be releasing Sunday. It's our playoff game of the year. I know you might say, hey, there's only three games left of the season. You're having your playoff game of the year. No, I like the game. That's why it's my playoff game of the year. I didn't have a bowl game of the year this year. I didn't have a game that was strong enough to be a 6%. I do like one of the two matchups on Sunday. You can check it out at wagertalk.com. And if you want to save $10, use that coupon code BIGBEN10. That's Big Ben in the number 10. You'll save $10 off my game of the year on Sunday. If you want to get all of my plays, check out that weekend all access or any of the other cappers this weekend, $69, all of their plays Thursday through Monday. Be sure to check out all the other videos and podcasts available now at wagertalk.com.